Hi guys, it's Alex here with Recombo, and I have here the Samsung Galaxy S3 and the LG Nexus 4, uh, two of the most powerful phones of 2012, the S3 being the best-selling phone of 2012, and the Nexus 4 um, being the first quad-core Nexus device. We're going to see them side by side and see which one has the edge. For starters, we have the Samsung Galaxy S3 with this 4.8 inch display and a predominantly plastic construction. On the front we have a home button down here, a physical home button with two uh, capacitive keys either side which light up when they're needed. There's an earpiece up the top and a 1.9 megapixel front facing camera. Around the edge you'll see this chrome band which is really quite nice, it adds a lot of uh, class to the design despite it also being plastic as the entire construction of the phone is. There's a lock key here and a volume rocker here. And on the back we have a removable back panel with an LED flash, an 8 megapixel camera and a loudspeaker and then underneath the back panel we have a removable battery and room for a uh, micro SD card which is expandable up to 64 gigabytes on top of the internal memory which is quite impressive, gives a lot of versatility to this phone. In comparison, the LG Nexus 4 is from a more premium design with more premium materials, it's glass front and back. Um, on the front we have a 4.7 inch IPS display uh, with no buttons at all, it's a completely buttonless fascia and that's down to the fact that stock ICS and stock Jelly Bean support these on-screen buttons for the entire UI. There's also a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera here and again we have a chrome strip around the edge which is a, a shiny chrome this time, it's very very nice as well as a chromed lock key and a chromed uh, volume key. There's also a micro SIM tray on the side here and that's because this is a unibody design unlike the removable nature of the S3 Everything is integrated, so there's no room for removable memory, there's no removable battery, it's all integrated into the phone. On the back here, as well as this glittery pattern that you might be able to see, in the bottom corner here we have the loudspeaker, and on the back we also have an LED flash and an 8 megapixel camera. And charging, as I said before, will have to take place through the micro USB port, you can't change the battery out as you can, so there's a little bit of flexibility lost on the LG that is available on the S3, thanks to that removable back. So if I unlock both phones for a second and I put them next to each other, what you'll see is the, uh, the colour reproduction on the Samsung Galaxy S3 is a little bit more vibrant. There's better colour reproduction even though the AMOLED technology used um, edges towards the blues. It has an emphasis on blue because of the nature of the technology used. Whilst the LCD on the Nexus 4 uh, produces better whites and um, better overall clarity with a much brighter backlight even though viewing angles aren't necessarily as good. The, the Galaxy S3's display is actually a 4.8 inch 720p Super AMOLED, HD Super AMOLED display, whilst the Nexus 4 utilises, just go back there, a 4.7 inch WXGA resolution display um, using IPS Plus technology. So we have AMOLED and LCD, which is why we can speak for that different uh, balance in whites and blacks, as well as brightness on the LCD screen. Now on paper, performance wise, these two phones are very evenly matched. The Samsung Galaxy S3 utilises a 1.4 GHz quad-core processor made by Samsung with a gig of RAM, whilst the Nexus 4 is the second phone off the uh, LG Optimus G to use a 1.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro, which is another quad-core processor and a very hotly anticipated one at that. What's more, it has 2 gigs of RAM compared to the S3's 1 gig. Having said that, usability in both devices is excellent. Navigating the UI using Jelly Bean 4.2 with the course Project Butter on the LG <clears throat> means that the UI in terms of application, opening, uh, navigation, and application draw here, you can see it's extremely fast and fluid. And the usability of stock Android is, is come a long way since Ice Cream Sandwich. There's a lot more going on just from the stock experience without any additional uh, apps and services needed. Having said that, Samsung have done a fantastic job. The UI isn't quite as smooth, but it's fast enough. You're not going to notice any issues with the uh, navigation, navigating the phone. And TouchWiz adds a lot of customizability to the uh, operating system. It's insane how many things you can tweak and change to your heart's content. So there's a lot more going on out of the box with the S3 compared to the stock experience, which you'd have to customize with third-party applications and widgets over time. The hardware available in both devices also means that they're both extremely capable when it comes to gaming. Both can support really in-depth 3D games such as Nova 3 which we have here. And you can see navigating, both have lighting effects, dynamic lighting, fast movement and particle effects, smoke, uh, lens flare, it's all happening in both devices. So you won't get um, a weaker experience in either of these uh, smartphones.
It's difficult to say that one of these devices is finitely better than the other. Both have excellent hardware and a really well-rounded user experience, and they'll both age gracefully going into 2013. The Samsung Galaxy S3 has a really great out-the-box experience with widgets and apps already implemented by Samsung to provide you with all sorts of things that you might need. If that's too much, then the uh, Nexus 4's more minimalist take on Android will offer those who like to tinker and tweak a lot more freedom because they can choose whatever they want. Um, in terms of price, both are available in 16 gigs and the prices isn't too dissimilar. The older Samsung Galaxy S3 has now dropped down to around 380 to 400 pounds SIM free, whilst the LTE version with the extra gig of RAM is probably about 100 pounds more. Uh, if you're able to get it from Google, the Nexus 4 can be had for about 279 pounds, but if you can't get it directly, and it's very hard to, then it's available elsewhere for closer to 489 pounds. So it depends where you buy these devices from and which model you go for, but they're both excellent and they both have their own strengths. If you have any questions, drop us a comment below, and if you want to find out more, head to recombi.com mobile or click the link in the description.